Hi, Greg. Um, hey there, beer Hi, tuners. Man. Welcome to Beer Analysis 101 with your host, Maxwell Starr, for this week's edition. And Nick. Starring Greg. Nick. Greg is here. Who First actually sent me this week's beer, so it was nice of him. This is Great Lakes Brewing's Robohop, New England style, Imperial IPA. Ooh, 8.5% ABV, the New England style version of uh, the long classic beer, uh, 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 Imperial IPA from Great Lakes. But first of all, first and foremost, let's go over to who we have with us tonight, which actually, believe it or not, does indeed start with Greg. Hi, how you hey, doing? Hey, I'm here, Nick. Now, Nick, this beer is really interesting. But not as interesting as the anime Carrie was talking about. Carrie, continue, please. I want to hear more about that. Later, later. Oh, I want to know now. Yeah. Well, now it's I'm really, sad. really, oh, really, yeah. really not relevant to the beer analysis. Yeah. Now I'm going to cry. All right. Let's I'm look. What are you saying, Greg? You actually going to talk about, you're gonna actually say, talk about how you're doing tonight rather than the anime that Red Harry was talking about? Doing great. I was doing great till you till you made Carrie stop talking about what he was talking about. Now we're all sad. Well, let's let Carrie talk about how he's doing tonight. I'm all right. Just did the uh, Bring Out Your Dead review mm -hmm. on my channel with Nick, and oh, he's happy. It was gonna, very, gonna very now tasty. have some more strong beer. So, mm -hmm. which come nothing to think like of it, I still need to grab it in my fridge. <laughs> Go to it. Yeah, it's nothing like following up on 11.7 percent beer with an 8.5 percent beer. It's going to be a good review. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good times. All right. All right, and let's uh, go over to Mr. Mr. Lee of uh, They Must Be Destroyed on Site and of uh, East uh, was it High Tide and Vibe. Uh, How are you doing tonight, sir? Um, I have two questions for you. I'm going to answer that question with two questions for you. Okay. First question. It's not working. Fine. Can you fly, Bobby? My fucking soundboard's not working for some reason. Whatever. Uh, it's fine. Um, have you ever oh, had dreams that that you? Um, I knew that was you coming. Had, you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so you you do you could you you want you want him to do you so much you could do anything. That sounds like me trying to get into a conversation, with Redbeard. And this, this ladies and gentlemen, oh. I'm pro-choice. Oh, all right. Let's go over to Mr. Sexton here tonight. How you doing, sir? Six I'm doing six great. I'm doing great, but I I fear for Lee right now because I see he's got a fan in the background going, which means it's above five degrees Celsius mm -hmm. in Nova Scotia right now. So oh, he is yeah. dying. He is I dying of heat right now. That. It's bad, <laughs> man. Uh, sorry, Lee. Sorry. Uh, I, hello, everyone. I'm doing great. Thank you. Uh, I hope you are all doing fantastic and enjoying Wednesday with a fan. I gotta get yeah. one out of, out of all my endeavors. It's like, like, can't be your only fans, after all, you know. Oh, Jesus! Like you were so good all day, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> You're so good all day. All right. Anyway, all That's right, let's get down moment. to the Great Lakes Brewing history here. Oh, Since God. we covered Greeley so much on here, we don't think we really need to say too much about them. Other than Great Lakes Brewery is a brewery that's located in Etobicoke, Ontario, about five minutes from Greg's place. Uh, first founded in Brampton, Ontario in 1987, purchased by the Balut family in 1991, and relocated to near die Etobicoke, where it is still run by the, that's the Balut family today. Great Lakes Brewery has produced such classic Ontario staples as Devil Pale, Devil's Pale Ale 666, Canuck Pale, Robohop Imperial IPA, Miami Weiss, and of course, award winning heavyweights such as Beard of Zeus, Farley Wine, and Solstice Imperial Stout. Robohop Imperial IPA, on the other hand, as uh, originally introduced in May of 2011 as an 8.5% EBV, 100 IBU behemoth of an Imperial IPA, part of Great Lakes Brewery's uh, Tank 10 series. In September of 2019, Great Lakes introduced the new England-style twist on the beer, keeping the original 8.5% ABV, but knocking the IBUs down to a juicier 40 IBUs and using different strain of yeast, giving the beer a softer mouthfeel. But yeah, like, um, the original Robohop was one of the, and I could probably get this into the beer history, but the original Robohop was one of, like, the OG Imperial IPAs on the Canadian market, and it was made back in the days of like the original 
IBU arms races, I used to call it back then, because breweries were trying to one-up each other but were coming out with a more intensely hopped beer on top of each other. It wasn't just ma making the dankest and juiciest shit like it is today. It was all about making bitter, 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 more bitter, more bitter. To the point now, put to the point, just like today with the juicy shit that it's put, but it's almost taken away. Like you don't. It got to a point where you can't taste or or sense that high IBU. So what was the point of making it that, registered that high? So I think Flying Monkeys came out with like Super Collider, which is like 160, 180 IBUs, which at that point is just freaking ridiculous. Mm, they might as well just be wanking off in their fucking in their fucking ferment fermentation tanks. I, I think point, mo right? most humans yeah, right. can't even detect anything beyond like a hundred IBUs or something. It's just like, that's beyond the human scope for taste. So mm. there, one, at one beer fest I went to, and this is going back to probably 2012, maybe 2013. I think flying monkeys had a beer called, it was called dragon warrior dragon quest. I've never had any luck looking it up on, on tap. So maybe I've gotten the name wrong or it's just not there. But I tried it on tap, and I mean, granted, I wasn't used to this kind of thing, but it was like a 12% triple IPA, and I swear to Christ, it's the closest I've ever come to chewing a beer. Like, it was just mm. like, this is not, this is almost not liquid. Like, I feel like I'm chewing these hops. Like It's probably, mm. it's probably, it's probably Dragon Quest in Japan and Dragon Warrior over here. Exactly. That's a <laughs> there, there's, there's a there's a there's an old NES joke for all you nerds out there. That wasn't bad actually. God. Dra Dra Dragon Warrior is one of the first RPGs I ever played. Great game. It's one of the first RPGs ever made, pretty much. You fight you fight metal metal slimes. I remember the slimes. I didn't like them. Anyway, um yeah, before I get over to uh, how people are doing tonight, I'm going to go over to the comments saying uh, Lee is in the lady. You know how we're doing, tonight, Nick. Only fans. Uh, Ooh, and of course, party. cheers, viewers. From Sexton. Sexton also says, cheers, Lee. Yep. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Lee. And only fans. Leah. And Rainy on your parade is in the comments saying, yo, dogs. What up? Dog. Why's he got a capital G on the end of there? I don't know. Uh, he's extra Greg. cool like that. Greg's probably got the most extensive history of RoboHop, so I'm going to let him talk for a few minutes. Oh, I should probably look it up. So, regular RoboHop, I've tapped him 10 times. So I've probably drank many more than that times. Uh, first time in 2014, then I have a million beers, so that's not accurate. Um, and the first time I had this, the thing about GLB beers is they tend to be really hyped when a new IPA comes out, and they sell out like crazy. And then they re-release a bunch of batches, and now you can get it pretty much all, well, not all the time, but you can get it. This comes out every month and a half, two months, and there's lots of them that last for weeks. Um, but the first time I had it, I actually couldn't get it in a can. And I had to just get it to sell for it on tap, which made me a sad panda because it was so freaking good. I'm actually not a huge fan of the original Hobo, Hobo Cop. Robo Hop, that's the one. Um, Hobo, Hobo Cop. Hobo Cop. Buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Fucking Hobo Cop. <laughs> Hobo turned his life around, man. Is he going to team up with Hobo with a shotgun? <laughs> Robo a very uh, violent movie, and it hurt my feelings. Um, so I had that. I loved it because I was not a big fan of the first name of the beer. Hi, Arnold. Um, I always felt it was just too hoppy to the point where, like, I almost got this kind of bad bitter taste. I can't even describe it really, but I've, it's just never been a beer that gelled with me that much. Uh, whereas the New England one, I quite a bit more. Excuse me, you're an asshole. Um, yeah, I had it. According to Untapped, I've had it twice. I'm pretty sure I've had it a few more times than that. And uh, yeah, and it's a fairly new beer. It only came out in 2019 for the first time. Was yeah, if you first came up with the New England one, yeah. Sorry, yeah, if you're listening to the history. I said that. Oh shit. To be fair, I wasn't listening to his history either. Yeah, I, I, know. Nobody does. I was listening to it, but at the same time, it was, it was the same stuff, kind of more or less that I've heard before. So I really wasn't. Yeah, well, except like, for the robot, paying super right? attention. Yeah, so that's well, that's on me. I'll give you that. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's it. Nothing that exciting. Sorry, Nick. Uh, it was. I was excited. All right, let's go over to who's next. We got Redbeard who's next. What's your history with Robohop? 
Uh, like Greg, I've had the other version, the non New England one, and wasn't a huge fan of it. It was, yeah, again, just like way too bitter for the sake of just being too bitter kind of thing. And that's, I don't mind a bitter beer, but when it's just bitter and nothing else, it's like, no, like this version, I have had many cans of up to this point. This is one of six that Greg sent to me because it was in the LCBO here. And I kept just, I knew this beer analysis was coming up, but I kept just buying a few cans every time I go to the LCBO and I'd be like, they still got like a case or so there. So I'll just drink them and go back the next time. And eventually the last time I'd gone, they had a half a case left and it was like the next day I had bought one or two and I drank it that night. I'm like, ah, I'll grab some more. And there was none left. I was like, Oh, now I'm the sad panda. But luckily Greg has access Again, Nick always says he's like five minutes away. Greg is like a minute away from Great Lakes. It's it's so <laughs> freaking close. It's, it's so I mean, that is not true. It's, I, it's more like well, you got to connect your traffic. I've found myself at like three minutes actually going home. It's a little quicker to go home from Great Lakes than it is to go there. It's about four or five minutes to get there, about three minutes to get home, depending on traffic. Depending on traffic and like how you hit the lights and stuff. So, yeah. Again, you can you could you could probably jog there in five minutes if you wanted to. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm that fast of a jogger. You should try that sometime. Just, just One of these days I'll time myself just to, we'll, we'll, we'll do a, cons- I'll come up with a consensus this weekend. I will jog there this weekend and we will, I'll post the results. You should randomly random jog to all the nearby right there, breweries right, right. and just, just have like the base, t- the base time. So we all know how close they all are to you. Yeah. Just kind of funny. Anyway. Yeah. I love this beer and um, I'm happy that, I believe Nick and Lee are having it. I, Ashley, have you had this one before now? I'm assuming yes. Yeah, so I'm assuming Nick and Lee are the only ones having it for the first time, and I hope they enjoy it. Even though I know Lee isn't a, su- a super big, juicy IPA fan, I, I hope this one does it for you. And that's the end of me for now. Yeah. Yeah. I look forward to it. Let's let Lee talk for a moment here. So, Lee. What's your? I know you don't really have you. Did you ever have a chance to have RoboHop back when? No, I've never had the original. Um, I thought this was the original until someone mentioned New England, and then I looked at the can. Oh, New England IP. Okay, that's why this isn't making my mouth pucker. I assume this was the uh, the pucker bomb fucking thing. Um, the IBU ICBM. Um, <laughs> No, I, I have no history of the original. I have no history of this other than uh, this showed up in my mail today, courtesy of Nicholas Lowe. Thank you very much. Oh, and so nice. And I, I assume you got that from, you sourced that from another nice gentleman in this chat. Is that not correct? Yep, the guy in the pink shirt. Oh, uh, yes, Gregory. Thank you, Gregory. Yeah, um, I touched with your drinking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, like you didn't literally put your fingers in what I'm drinking. The can was sealed. You'd be surprised what they can do with resealing technology. These days. And hooped. Now you'll have to guess whether it's hooped by me or hooped by Nick, or maybe a combination. Okay. Okay. Um, pretzel or something. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Anyway. Um, yeah. So that's my history of it. Literally none. All right. And who's left? We got Mr. Ashley. Ash, what's your history with RoboHop and this one? So um, this one I had accidentally for the first time when I thought I was having the other Robo one, the, the original. And I think maybe, I don't know if Greg got that into my hands or not, but uh, I can't remember. I had the, the OG Robo hop and uh, I, I gave it a very favorable score on untapped and I remember enjoying it. And I think when I got this one um, for the first time, yeah, it must've been 2019. Because I don't think I had it last. Well, maybe I did have it last year. Fuck, it doesn't matter. I've had I, I I've had both variations. Anyone who knows me, it was probably have a good idea as to which one I'm going to prefer. But uh, I ha- I have had it before, and um, yeah, that's it. Boom. Nice. All right, let's go over to uh, let's go over to me. Actually, I have to give my th- my history on this thing. I do actually have. Hi, I, I can't, I, hi Greg. I can't remember exactly when. Greg was the one that first sent me my first can of Robohawk, and I think it was either 2019 or 2020. I want to say 2019, and it was the original Robohawk, the one that's still 100 right to use. And I thought, I think it actually might have been like the first time it was rebrewed in quite some time. 
because I remember like as soon as hearing about it, they come out because it is a beer that I remember coming out. It was like one of those lust after beers back in like 2011, 2012, when you were like, craving those Ontario IPAs. And it was like when I, I remember first hearing about it, of course, there's the kit, the, the kitschy label with the, with Robocop with a hot body. Uh, and there was also the, uh, you know, that's the fact that it's one of those leading great IPAs from Ontario at the, at the time. And it was just like, I wanted to try one and I wanted to try one for years. That's the yeah, you can right see. There. You can see Robo Nick there's Craig Color. here. It's a good looking beer. It's still in the original. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. Anyway, um, long story short, uh, the uh, it was like one of those ones I wanted to try for years. I never got a chance to try. And then as soon as it became it was actually being brewed again in Great Lakes Brewing, and Greg was about to send me a bunch of beers. I'm like, dude, get one of these, please. And I wasn't disappointed. Like I totally was blown away by like being in 2019 we're in the, the height of the juice craze and i'm drinking this og fucking pine forward full of resin like punch in the face imperial ipa that was delivering exactly what i wanted it was like a trip down memory lane um yeah so it was like amazing and now when i heard they came out with a new england version i managed to like i i i, I talked to Greg into sending me a couple of cans and i've since sent one to lee but still it was just kind of like i i want to try this version too and you know if they just came out with it i think greg said maybe we can do a ba 101 on it because it's in the lcbo and like sure why don't we do it so yeah there you go my history is good everything to do with greg and uh yeah. you know it's if it's all about him then uh, he's paying attention so it's uh it's a uh, yeah, like the original OG oh, Robohop was one of the ones that I was kind of I wanted to try for years, and uh, now we got the New England version in my glass. So it's all right. So right now uh, we don't have any more comments from anybody. We do have six viewers, so if you want to drop us a line, or, like ask a question, or just even let us know what you're drinking, we do interact with everybody. Uh, as for the time being, we're gonna pan it for the full panel of five people and uh, ask something just to next. Oh, Greg oh, has to do first. Ashley, you go first, and I'll tell my story. You go, okay. Well, you know what? This is sort of going to be directed at you, Mister. Okay, Greg. I like the of me. Hi, how are you? In your face? Oh no, there we go. Uh, you go. Uh, anyways, um, so I've noticed that I have a lay uh, one label, and Nick's got a different label. Why is that, Greg? Um, I didn't know there was more than one label. What are? Oh yeah, there is. Oh, interesting. Hmm. What's your See, name? Is? Oh my god, I love I just noticed that. He's got a hop in, the, in a freaking crib for all those baby pallets. Oh <laughs> dude. <laughs> so I think it's really weird in the little picture. It says yo on the side of his head. I That's what I noticed. It. My uh, only without, a, without <laughs> actually knowing, are they actually different? Oh yeah, you're right. They are different. Okay, well, so what's what's the um what's the date on your on your guys' cans? I got uh, January 26, January. 21. Yeah, mine's the same. Me mine's well. January 12th. Yeah, mine's January 12th. So they must have just made a change yeah, recently. I, yeah. I do think they changed the label. So my guess, my educated guess, is that they just had extras that they used up. Those are the old ones. Either that, or they get two different labels concurrently, like Collective Arts does. Well, they, they Great Lakes did just change a bunch of their labels. Like they, they didn't like change it a whole lot. They just no, like yeah, seems yeah. like they changed up some colors and stuff more than anything. The, the, the picture and stuff still seems to be the same. Like the original, the OG Robohop picture that we saw in that video you shared a little bit ago. Fuck, I love that. that. That was very different. But these ones, I think yeah. they might have just like kind of refresh their art, like they did with uh, the pompous ass and octopus wants to fight and kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah, they did, they're doing it all kind of more high res art or whatever. Now, I'll tell you the story. I, I should have had this in my uh, in my history, but I forgot about it. But now we're shooting the shit, so it's okay. So this is the beer for those of you that know Joe. God rest his soul. He used to always make fun of me that I had a magical beer fridge that could age stuff in and. Not this one, but the regular RoboHop is where that came from because the first time I think I, I tried, I gave like a 7.5. I'm like, oh, you know, it's fine beer. I probably overrated it because it's GLB. I tend to do that. Um, and then the next time I was like, oh, this aged for two weeks in my fridge. You know, it's so much better. And I gave it like an 8 or an 8.5 or something. 
And that's how the mystical magic fridge came about is that, and to this day, I do believe that the original RoboHop is better if you age it for a few weeks. It's a little bit hot when you first get it fresh. Mm, and it. you throw it in the fridge for you know two weeks to a month, and it's actually a better beer. But that's that's, that's where all the this, beer fridge mystery This came. label is like, I don't know if anybody noticed, but it's kind of like a, a, a premium feeling label. I don't know how to explain it, but like. It is textured. The letters, yeah, they're, they're they're slightly textured and stuff. It's not just like a super flat. Like they they spent a bit of money on that. That that can't be super cheap. I like mine. it. I feel cheated. It well, feels the, cool. Give you a couple points for that. The, they're about um, to get all their uh, brew pub monies, so because they, they are opening up a brew pub. Yeah, they're hiring. hiring you know, chef. They're talking about brew pub. Maybe they're they're make, adding the texture feel to the can, so it makes it feel more premium. So more people are more likely to buy at the store. Because breweries are making it up in volume by sales of cans than they are with walk-in traffic. Fuck. I, I'm theory. sorry. I love that. I love that they put a fucking hop in a crib. And that's like <laughs> that is the Alex. biggest troll move ever. I love it. I want to email them and say I appreciate if whether or not it was intended or not. I think it's funny as fuck. Hey, if you hit them, on, <laughs> hit them up on social media. They'll reply to you. They reply to pretty much everything. Even my my annoying poster, I'm just like, I don't like this. They're like, well, we don't really care, sir. Well, it's funny because like on the back they say like, as a child, he was shunned for his laser beam eyeballs, bulbous hop shaped torso, and robotic limbs. So that that isn't him as a baby. I see no robotic limbs on that. That's just a, that's just a big that's fat a baby. baby hop. It's like he he impregnated the hop with his robo powers. Well, I mean, it could be him before he grew the robo limbs or something. It could be like yeah, a bit maybe. Of, like a newborn him. Yep. Maybe he just shit sewed hops and that's he just took shit in someone's crib. Hop yeah. extract. Uh, that, that's a if that's a normal size crib, that is an abnormally big size shit. I'm just saying. <clears throat> it's gonna take like, a shit creep. Like I just, for, that, for that to all come up. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. What a great movie. I'm going to shit in your crib, dead or alive, creep. Lee, what year did that come out? Robocop 87, I believe. 87, yeah. That was that's a fantastic movie. I, I think that is I think it's probably one of the, the earliest like super violent movies I watched as a child. Me as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like like probably right around the age group where my son is at and where my son and daughter are at right now. Like I ten. You know, it, it was it yeah. was like the, the guy at the end there, like the guy fucking gets like ass the mute fucking yeah, ass on him and, like, and he literally like gets hit by the car and just explodes. Oh, that, that was that was insane. That's in one of the opening yeah. scenes, isn't it? No, no that was it's near the end. end. It's near the end. end. I'm sorry, Kyrie. and it was yeah. all. I I feel like there was the tiniest bit of like stop motion with the uh, well, not the tiniest, but that, that but as far as like special yeah, effects go, yeah, stop motion. That, yeah. uh, just ninety nine percent of that was fucking practical. That was all like. Oh, yeah. Way before, it's like, all practical. Uh, There's no CGI yeah. involved in oh, that. Yeah. I, gotta, I gotta sit down and watch that again. I haven't watched it since I was that a such a great first movie. talking about. That is such a great first movie, and then such a series that just completely shits the bed on it. I feel like I the, 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 the second one wasn't TV. terrible, but I remember second the one third. Oh, yeah. the third one was awful. Or something like that. I remember having the comic book for the yeah. The that, that, one. that was kind of neat how they like put the guy's yeah. body into the thing and it kind of went crazy. That I that read was the comic right. book for RoboCop too before I actually watched the movie. I don't know if anybody here saw the uh, the reboot they did. Not that that long. It, it wasn't uh, wasn't terrible. I, I agree. It was, it, it, was it, unneeded, it, but it wasn't terrible. Yeah, it, it, it was done just like a bit differently because everybody, I guess, they saw like nothing but the uh, in the promos and stuff. It was all all in black and everyone's all pissed off it was like that's because the corporation had him in it by the end he's like i i, I kind of i almost wish that one had gotten a sequel like i feel like it had, it had, it had potential well, it's to not it. too late it's only what seven years ago it's not gonna happen though like it, it bombed like yeah, generally it, bombed. it wasn't received well at all <laughs> like so like, so many movies these days were like they're Building up to this sequel, and just that's not going to happen. I, I that, think the Monster know, Hunter movie that came out gotta, recently. Got to admit that there's a lot of hey, there's no original ideas anymore. It's all just sequels to sequels. You need to read the room of sequels or some shit. Like you need to read the room and figure. Okay, what movies need to remake? What movies don't? There's some movies that yeah. don't need to fucking remake. You know, and just don't do it. Like, like I was glad you know they made uh, Doctor Doctor Sleep. But they didn't remake The Shining, so okay, that's fine. They made a like, sequel, and it was actually a really good. Like your RoboHop, there's only uh, RoboHop, the RoboCop, RoboCop. There's only one Peter Weller, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. 
And I love it. I love it when they actually make a decent sequel. They say, or sometimes they even go above and say, okay, you know, all those shitty movies you don't like, we're going to ignore those. Now we're just going to make a sequel to that. And I mean, it doesn't always turn out good, but often it does. Like they, they can even wait a while. Like I, I randomly watched this cool YouTube video yesterday on uh, the endearing, amazing partnership that uh, Jack Lemon and Walter Matthau had and how they like the original kind of movie that kind of took them all, like, put them in the spotlight as like the best comedy cup odd team ever odd couple and so many years later they came back and made a fucking sequel like way like 30 oh, years or something that. later it was insane just yeah like if you and, and and it was done well like sometimes you can wait a while and make a sequel and it's like what why like the independence day sequel all right why so, all right so let's go over to the comments here we got uh Lee Hardy saying, Greg, educated. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Love you, Greg. Wow. Anyway, um, My dear Bozo says, like things just went south. south. Yes, South River Brewing. Um, oh. None of your businesses, Bush. I mean, yeah, imagine you're drinking um, uh, Bush then, which is, I guess, like for a lager, that's not bad. Bush is fine uh, for a budget beer, yeah. Yep, exactly. Uh, Lee Hardy says, I've never seen it, referring to, I'm assuming, Robocop, which... We'll have to fix that then. Yeah. We, we just basically that. spoiled I the I fuck out of it. I resolve to sit down and watch it. i got to find out what service you can watch it on. Why don't we all watch and do a commentary together? It'll be great. Do a podcast on it. Yeah. Um, we, can, well, we can share right. and watch videos uh, together through Discord. It's kind of fun. Just saying. Ashley Sexton says, what bush are you putting with your lipid? Putting to your lips is what oh, I'm trying lip, to say. Yeah, lip, sorry. Lip, He's making a dirty joke. Well, no, there's Whoa. a bunch of different type of bush. There's bush ice. That's one. And yes, Dr. Fives needs a reboot. Dr. Dr. Fives needs a reboot. All righty. So let's go over to, uh, are we ready to give her our thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's start with Mr. Rouge Beard. No, sure. Or actually, you know what? I think it's great. You know, I'm going to let Greg, Greg, Greg. go. Yeah. I'm getting him out of order because StreamYard's got them out of order right now. Fuck. <sighs> go ahead, Ray Beard. What do you think? Oh, all right. Like I kind of spoiled in the beginning, I've had many of these and I'm a fan. Um, it's just kind of everything you want from a New England style Imperial IPA. It smells like like pineapples and mango. It extra juicy. There's zero hint. It's higher ABV. It's got a good mouthfeel to it. It's like if, they, if this was one of GLB's full time releases like core beers i i would buy one of these as long as it's again relatively fresh like i haven't had this particular version i've, I've had the og robo hop when it's been a bit old and it drops off and becomes this just multi horrifying mess i'm assuming this would probably do more or less the same but as long if this was available all the time in a relatively fresh state, I would buy at least one every single time with the LCBO. Style-wise, that is a 10. And personal enjoyment, 9.5. I absolutely love this beer. Wow. 10 and 9.5. 10, 9.5. Alrighty, let's go over to Grigori. Oh, hold on. have to follow up uh, Sexton this time. No, I can copy Redbeard and say everything he said. Um... Funny, I don't think I've ever had a RoboHop so bad that I like like so aged, and I've, I've aged them for definitely a few months, and I've never had them that I thought they were that bad. But then again, maybe I got my one of my first ones that ever came from. It was like back in the days when I wasn't really looking at dates. I was in Sudbury at an LCBO. Oh, RoboHop, yes, and I got home when it was like six or seven months old, and it was Gross. fucked up. Oh, really? It was, yeah, it was bad, very bad. Uh, you've never experienced the wonderfulness of a ten-year-old steam whistle. Well, this is true. <laughs> I, I feel I feel like you might be using wonderfulness in the wrong context, but I, I got you. I got you. I mean, I don't think they had the freshness seals back then. <laughs> yeah, no. No, they, no, but it was to the point where I had I had been drinking several fresh steam whistles, and then suddenly I pop one open. I'm just like, <laughs> this is okay. Awesome. I'm definitely a little drunk, but this tastes really weird to me. <laughs> like I'm like, what? And this is a 2018. I'm like. <laughs> 2008. They're missing a one somewhere. How did that even happen? <laughs> Please tell uh, me they're missing a one. <laughs> I, I, was, I was at my boss's summer party, which happened to be at at their house, and um, they 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 it was fully catered. My boss is quite well. We were fully fully catered with a company that 
supplied some of their own beer, but rich people get a lot of free shit over the years and neither her or her husband are big drinkers. So it all ends up going into their basement and sitting there forever. So at some point in the evening, they said, well, let's bring out all this beer we've had in the basement for years and serve it to our guests. Oh and my God. Is, and not realizing that serving 10 year old steam whiskey wasn't a great idea. That, Gross. Oh, this is not good. I think I drank like three of them because at that point I wasn't going to stop. So I was just like, <laughs> yeah. Fucking gross. This is, this is where my life is at. Greg, right Steve, Greg sees, Greg, sees uh, 10 year old beers the same way he sees consent. It's not yeah. For, whoa. <laughs> that <laughs> might have went a bit far just now, old. Nick. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, that, 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 I think that oh, Nick, that was bad. All right. Let's go over to it. Now, what were you giving for your rating? Yeah, let, let me give my rating, Nick. Fuck. Uh, and then I switch over to bourbon, by the way, and then I don't remember how I got home. Um, Fuck. Yeah, it's it's really solid. I've never been that big of a fan of the original Robo Hoppy. Like I look, I look at my own taps. I definitely have probably overrated over the years. Uh, but to me, it's like a seven five beer. Like it's not bad by any means. It's just not great. This I feel it just has kind of the thing, and I guess I drink enough GLB that. I kind of recognize their signature, whether it's their yeast or whatever. Ashley can fill you in later. Um, but they have a certain taste to them, and this has the same taste. It has the same taste as RoboHop, and it just seems that everything about RoboHop that was good, they took, and everything that was bad about RoboHop, they took and just gave me a lot of gas. But they seem to have smoothed it out, and just that little bit of bitterness I didn't like about RoboHop. There's just this off taste that kind of bugged me. It was, it was like a boozy taste, or at least what I interpreted as a boozy taste. Um, and they just smoothed it out. And just, it's like they just basically this is the better version of RoboHop, in my opinion. Uh, and that's weird because I generally don't like New England IPAs as much as I like non-New England style IPAs. Um, so yeah, this one's. I mean, what is this? Double New England IPA. Thank you, Muslim suck. Sorry for whoever's lady is yelling at me. I'll, I'll hurry up. Um, most of them suck, so this is an easy ten. Like. For style easy because frankly there's not that much competition most of the competition is shit uh not to take away but that's just a fact and as a beer it's um hmm, at, i gotta go with red beer it's a solid nine five like it's, it's there's not much to complain about this beer it's just you can drink a lot of these and they also go down so quickly that you could I think I think I sent Carrie six of them, and then like a day or two later, I asked if he had any left, and they were all gone. I can see that because like they are very. I kept the one. I kept the one for tonight. Yeah, but they are very yeah, fucking yeah. smooth. You could drink a bunch of these in a yeah, night. Share it immediately, like you thought you were going to. She was. She could have came over tonight and joined me for this. It just didn't happen. Didn't I don't know. Just didn't happen for a reason. Yeah. yeah to be fair, Carrie did offer to to share with her. And I think Kara had already drank his other five cans before yeah. before it was even thought of that lady. We thought we were gonna she was gonna drink all the other four cans and then whatever. Not it's sure a good beer, cans. man. Maybe I shared my two cans with Lee. Well, Nick, you're just a better person than Redbeard, okay? Let's if if that makes you happy. Everybody <laughs> seems to be. <laughs> all right, all right. So yeah, so ten and nine five again for Greg. Wow. All right, this is learn uh, anyway let's see uh see what mr lee thinks okay so no uh secret not my favorite style at all um probably one of my least favorite styles when it comes to beer um i almost feel like it should be categorized as something other than an ipa honestly because usually it's just like doesn't even taste like a regular old you know regular strength ipa to me there's like no bitterness at all it's fucking it's just not there but you know i'll, I'll put that sort of uh petty shit aside uh as far as the style goes for this stuff it's what i tolerate and quote unquote like out of this style you know when it's not super juicy not super cloying and sweet i find this is pretty muted doesn't have a lot of like annoying like uh tropical flavors that i don't like it, it, it seems a little bit more subdued seem to have a little bit of a uh more of a melon tangerine thing than like a pineapple mango thing i don't know this is personally what i'm sort of picking out of it it's very very smooth it's got a kind of like light medium body to it so that's pretty good um it's unoffensive it's not cloying it's 
at first when I was drinking it, it was a little bit sweeter, but I think that's just the uh, one of the ingredients on the can, like just raw sugar that they add to it or whatever to up the alcohol, um, which, you know, some of that just isn't going to burn off. So it's, it's going to be there present in the drink. I was almost thinking when I was when I was initially drinking this and I thought it was the original RoboHop. Um, it was starting to remind me of uh, Propeller Double IPA when sometimes when they have an off batch, right, where it's like too sugary sweet or whatever. Um, and, but that died away. Finishes like with pff, just finishes like these things do without any sort of like lingering bitterness or aftertaste, really. So as far as the style goes, this is probably up there with the best I've had. Uh, probably nine five for style. Um, as far as what I like in a beer, could I drink it? Yeah. Would I want to drink it again? Not really. Um, so I'll give it a six. Ooh. All right. Bring in down the house. Oh. All right. Let's go over to Mr. Ash. Thank you, Lee. Hey, we, always, we always need some balance in the beer world. Speaking of balance, we're going to have Lee, uh, Mr. Ash, that's basically his tasting notes are going to account for 50% of tonight's score. No, no. Jesus. Um, no, I, I, <laughs> I think uh, I, I'm going to agree with, a, you know what? I'm going to. I'm going to agree with a bunch of what a lot of people are saying here. Um, I think Lee and I, I think we, we are sort of kindred spirits with our beer styles, uh, with the exception of Steam Whistle, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, to for me, a New England IPA isn't something I crave or sort of lust after or sort of go fucking gaga shit over and piss my pants and, sh you know, waiting in line to go get this stuff. But, um, yeah. I'm more of a West Coast or traditional IPA type of guy myself. Anyways, I digress. Um, so notes I got off this on the nose. Uh, I got primarily just mango, uh, a slight lychee, which for me, lychee is just like a nondescript sort of sweetness, sort of going on to what Lee said about the melon, sort of like, you know, you got a sweetness there, but you, it's sort of like, for me, it's just sort of floating in the ether of just, it's a little sweet, it's a little bit of tropical, but you can't really put your your finger on it. But for me, I get mango on, on the aroma, but I also pick up a big yeast component on this as well. Uh, I get like a, like a yeasty, slight mineral-y type of aroma off it. Um, the mango sort of carry, carries through on the sip. Um, I still get that. Looking off the side here, mirror, uh, yeah, the mango carries through. Um, I do find this a little grassy, uh, like on the back end, it's a little bit grassy, a little minerally, uh, like a little vegetal. I, I, I want to pinpoint like a specific, uh, like a specific Pissy. herb that it's sort of reminding me of. It's just like, like, uh, I don't know, Greg, Lake Effect IPA. When I drink that, I, I automatically get like mint, um, for whatever reason that, that jumps in my brain, but. With this, there there is like a slight vegetal type aftertaste to it, um, but it doesn't for me for the style. Like, yeah, it's kind of like the mango, and it's you know for me the lychee, maybe a little bit of pineapple if you're stretching, but it doesn't have like that burst of like bouquet. You know what I mean? Like, it nails on the head like the super soft body. The like it's it's smooth, it's creamy, it's easy to drink. You pound them back. You, you don't taste the 8.5 percent there there's not even a whisper of alcohol on it so they they you know they I make this beer the pineapple that so many new england style ipas have or you you do or do not i do not get pineapple okay. yeah like, or, or grapefruit really but yeah. yeah i don't get any grapefruit off this one um i got pineapple off the smell of myself yeah well so but uh i mean for me it's it, it, if i'm gonna sit back and enjoy this it's it, it's gonna have to like blow my face off with like a tropical basket right but I, i'm finding it a little bit one note um i will give it kudos though because i've been finding over the last like four or five months or half a year or whatever that a lot of these heavily dry hopped ipas give me heartburn uh and this one it's almost triggering but not quite um i'm just it's a whiny bitch friendly it's a friendly I'm beer i'm just a whiny bitch um so anyways um so for this for style, I'm going to give it an 825. I think it does a decent job of, of hitting the New England style. I mean, because people just want something that's fruity that they can drink and it doesn't really remind them all that much of beer. Hmm. 
let's be honest. Right. And uh, for personal right. preference, though, I'm going to give it a seven. seven. Wow. I'm going to give it a seven. Now, if this was the OG version, uh, nice and malty and all that stuff, but it's not. I mean, I'd give it a much higher score, but whatever. All right. So I, what was I, that? I Eight, eight, uh, personal eight two seven five. and eight two five for style. Eight two five for style. Thank you, Raider. Wow. <laughs> or the eight two five. No, it was you like, didn't it say like eight point two like, seven three six five seven. Like eight point six two or it's or your channel. You can say whatever, whatever you want. Repeating or whatever. I don't know. But I'm gonna cut you. Sorry. I love you, Ash. All right, let's go over to moi. Or am I the last one? Yes, I am. All right, so my thoughts on this, and it's funny people are talking about like I don't get pineapple because I'm getting pineapple. Uh, I'm getting this pithy pineapple, passion fruit, and I can I know pineapple. I've had a couple of pineapple beers recently, and I know pineapple. Like pineapple pizza. Yeah, uh, I'm getting pineapple, pe pineapple, passion fruit, skewing towards a little bit of cotton candy in the aroma, but not quite that sweet. And one thing that really stands out to me is that little bit of pine sap aroma, kind of like that little touch of piney forward that really reminds me of the original OG uh, Robohop. So uh, as far as the taste goes, it's juicy, uh, pithy pineapple, apple, stone fruit, uh, with a hint of pine resin with a lingering resin in the back, low to medium carbonation, a nice gentle soft body here. It doesn't linger too long, and it leaves a little uh, a hint of resin in the... I will say that this thing for 8.5%, that does not taste like 8.5%. That is going down super easy and super smooth. Like, that's all I have left of this stupid beer after after an entire 500 mil can, after drinking most of this, and the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm a little getting a little tipsy at this point. So uh, I will say that for the style, I'm not, like, I don't feel like that's, as juicy enough for like a true New England style IPA, maybe I'm, you know, playing favorites. I do actually like the style, like some of the other ones here, but it, I do agree that it's kind of getting old at this point. I think it's around for for good, but I mean, at the same time, it's overdone. Uh, but at the same time, I, I, I do think how many times can I say at the same time? That was a few right there. Yeah, great. I know. Um, what I what I do have to say is like as far as this goes, it's kind of. It, it, it's not it's not like it's um it, it, it's not like it matches up with that style super great like if you you get ones that are like nuclear weapons compared to this this beer like this thing is subdued in the new england in new england department but um i feel so like so yeah so yeah so i mean i don't i'm not giving it a perfect score out of that but i will say that this thing encapsulates everything i would expect to have in a beer that's called Robohop uh, for New England style beer. So, like, as far as New England style beer goes, I'm just going to give it an eight. But for my overall joy enjoyment, I'm going to give it an eight five because what I'm getting is a New England style. It's New England style enough, but it's still Robohop. It's Robohop with the, a less intense hop punch on it, but still has a lot of those original hoppy, piney flavors that you get from the original OG Robohop. That really makes me think that, yeah, this is still Robohop. It's just a New England version of it. Uh, and I got to say that I really enjoy this. I think I still prefer the original. But I'm, I'm legitimately sad. It, that, like, it's, that it's, it's still pretty now. good. It's gone now. Yeah, we're talking about me here. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're talking about you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'm just saying because it's, it's my turn to go. Um, anyway, so yeah, like 8.8 8, 8 and 8.5, 8 style. 8.5 overall. Now, now I'm going to pan out and let everybody else talk. We do have, com we have a pile of comments there. This is the best batch of Robohop I've ever had. Yeah, I feel like there's two people in here that got a more recent batch of Robohop than the rest what of us. What are you too. having now, Greg? That is not <laughs> Robohop at all? Oh, one of you is observant. No, it's Robohop. It's totally Robohop. That is not. That you. I feel you could have mixed something with Robohop to make that, but I feel like that wouldn't be very good. Robohop that he is mixed with a fine decanter of well, Merlot. So since that seems to be the mix tonight, I'm I'm also joining, <laughs> I'm Oh, also shit. Joining, what the hell? I'm also joining the crew of let's drink, bring out your dad with some Robohop. Oh, wow. He ghosted you on the fucking review. What a dick. Uh, he wasn't. Nick and I have been planning it for about a week or so. I didn't even realize. 
I don't even know why I didn't even think to ask Greg like to Greg. join in, but well, it wasn't my channel. Well, truthfully, I normally wouldn't have a bottle. I just happen to have a bottle in my fridge. I normally just keep them all in my cellar, which is not at my house. Uh, but uh, I do have one, so why not? During during the uh, bring it your dead review, we did mention that we Nick and I both do have still in the fridge or cellar, or wherever you want to say. Uh, last year, the 2020 uh, double tempest. So if you want to be part of that. I'll let you know when it happens. I've only got like 18 of those bottles left, so I'm probably sure I can sacrifice one. I thought, I thought you might have a couple. I guess we're, we're planning on doing the uh, the rye barrel aged one for beer analysis, so I'm keeping that one. Yeah, yeah I'm Maybe sure Nick is saving a special yeah. occasion. Are we planning Good on doing are we planning on doing Beatrix? Do you have Beatrix, Nick? Yes, I do. Are we planning right. on that for beer analysis? Could do, could do uh, BA, BA 101 on that at some point as long as yeah. we can get it. How regularly available is it at uh, GLB? Uh, I don't know if they still have it, but it's been available for the last little while. They release it every – like they release it somewhat commonly. I've got a can of that. I've still got a can of that Monty uh, fucking now, the only one from them. I drank that one. Now the only the only thing is with uh, Beatrix, it's coffee. So I mean, even if they re-release it again, your your cans probably could be very different than a new one. one. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, so, I, I mean, I've got one saved. I don't know who else does. I think Nick and Redbeard do. No, uh, yeah. So Nick, Nick, they drink his Monty, not the Beatrix. So. Oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. I was sort of zoning out. I I do have a Beatrix as well. I don't know. Oh, if I right. Right. Do that for BA one hundred and one. Actually, I don't remember if I sent one to Chris or not. But Chris, I honestly can't remember. And you know what, uh, uh, Nick, you could probably like it's it's a Baltic porn. You can you can I can sit on that for months. Well, you know we're what saying like with the, yeah, it's, got, it's got, got the coffee, coffee in it though. though. But yeah. I wouldn't worry too much. Oh, about oh, coffee. Sorry, sorry. yes, coffee's going to fade. But I don't as far as um it, that how goes, is it now like four months? I wouldn't worry about it. Greg, if yeah. you're able to uh, still get your hands on some when you uh, if you do yeah, that uh, still available whale, whale thing, it's Greg, still Greg, with the brewery. So yes, unless they sell out in the next day or two, if you want to throw one. throw three cans in there three for cans me, of it? and okay. I I, I will maybe forward one of those cans to maybe a certain other bald bastard beside me right now. The couple other beers that I wanted to send his way. Oh, I think you're talking about Lady Lee. I'm like, I, I no, she, she, she's not that bald at all. Well, I thought maybe no. you weren't talking about her head. I don't know. But. No, you know, that, 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 I'm not going to say stuff like that in this chat. Come on now. That's what I'm here for to discuss people and, and make you look better. See, I'm trying to discuss upgrade, people. I'm trying to upgrade your status. Thanks. Can we get to, well, she get the comments. That should be something we should do before we end yeah. this. I'm sure yeah. there'll be enough of you, Greg, in there. I'm doing the math up. So where the hell did we even comments, fucking? Okay, I, I can read them. I guess. Like, where did we even <sighs> leave off? Do, 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 Doctor Phoebes was the last thing I think. So lately, yes. has asked, "What's next week's beer?" Good so work. That's yeah, that's um, none of none of your business, says Bush Light, which is um, I'm a, I'm hoping it's what you're drinking because it's not definitely not next week's beer. It's fine. Uh, um, Lately confirms I did offer the uh, that she could have came over tonight and had this with me, but she didn't want to. She's, you know, she's doing she's doing her tonight. Um, and then none of your business says I'm on eight. I'm assuming he's referring to his previous place. He's, he's at had eight bush lights tonight, so yeah. he's had the equivalent of like one decently high ABV craft beer. Good job. Like what well, I would actually just. <laughs> Eight bush light is four real beers. Nice. And then LOL, what is real board? Five percent. Still be wasted. LOL. No, it's no, it's it's not that. It's just real beer is made with actual beer ingredients and not like rice and corn syrup and shit. Mm. Bush light is is yeah. Well, actually apologize. Hey, it's real know, beer. Like, bush to where you're at. Terrible real for, for, for yeah. Like I, it, it, I, if you I, want a maintenance I, beer, like something to drink between the crowd. Oh yeah. Beer. Fucking get a get a I mean, I do it plenty of times. Get a get a fifteen pack of Bush Light when you're just you need, you want something to have the sip on while you're doing shit during the day. It's fine for for me. My my cheap yeah, go-to work, beer drink that these days is like it, it's it's been for a while now. Canuck Pale Ale from Great Lakes. Like I just mm -hmm. I have I don't want to. I'm not trying to like I'm better than you because oh. all the drink is crowd. No, it's just, just that's I I don't I don't want 
anything to do with those giant conglomerates trying to fucking take over the world of craft of, of beer. And I, I just, I, I don't ever since I learned about that, when I first kind of started doing this beer stuff and I learned about like what some of these companies are trying to do to the world and just destroy all of the creativity and just everybody drink our macro crap. I'm, I'm not, they get none of my money, but that's just me being weird. Um, all right. So, Saying bush ice is dirty as fuck. It is. Sure. I, that stuff I mean, gives me a headache. I've had Laker ice and that's just absolutely disgusting. Just one of the most gross things I've ever had in my life. Uh, bush is low quality enough. Cheers, Sexton. Ashley, bush is ice is the dirty Sanchez of the beer world. Mm. Nice. What? And Lady Lee <laughs> laughed a good deal. Maybe peed herself a bit. Know your business. Usually drink European lagers. Just got some bush light to try her out. Yep. It's fine. Yep. Uh, best Pilsner Urquell. Urquell. I, I believe I. That is a super tasty. I might have been in one of those. I think I was on that review. I think. Maybe. For me, I just did the yeah, Pilsner we, style for me. Sure it, it's. I don't mind them. I'll have it now and then, but it's not a go to. I like kind of more of the. I used I to be. Before, I, be, before my palate shifted and went like. Mm, hops. So technically speaking, yeah, Pilsner Urquell is a Euro lager, but I don't really think of it as the same kind of Euro lager as the others because I think that one's more like a the true to form Czech Pilsner. Yeah, it's a real Pilsner. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, what we get across the ocean is is not going to be like no. the true representation. So I mean, we're we're getting a whisper of what a of what a true well, we'd have to go to Europe like. to get that. But I mean. Whatever. Yeah, it, you actually uh, do. Uh, my, uh, my, dab friend, dark? my friend, my uh, friend Daniel uh, Harper can attest to that. He actually went to the brewery and had beer there. So yeah, it'd be amazing. I'm sure. Daniel's an interesting fellow. She is. Um, Nick, uh, your lager Grolsch. I've had that. Mm -hmm. again, Grolsch. Just, uh, again, just not, none of those beers or anything that. Only out of, the, out of the bottle, though. Do it for Only me. Kind the swing, of top yeah, bottle. swing top bottle. I do love a swing top bottle. Just, just like... Wait, every once in a while, they'll go on sale, and that's a good Reusable. Deal. Like somebody yeah. like Ashley, you know, mm. keep those swing top bottles. You can use them for craft beer and shit. Why not? I'm, I'm liquidating my stuff, man. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just, I don't know, yeah. other people. Like for me, like one of the one of my favorite it. things with those bottles, and New Ontario was bad, not just like on top of so many things that have been and are bad at, um, they were using those bottles for a while. And the majority, you know, you get that, like, I'm, I'm all about that, like, you go to pop it, and you, that super sweet pop of the swing top. I, lo I love that. But occasionally it's like, you pop it, and nothing happens because they did such a shitty job of carboning their beer kind of thing. It's like, oh, good job. Uh, you, that's you just a bad seal. That's just a bad seal. No, 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 it wasn't. <laughs> it was not. It was them doing a terrible job of carboning their beer. It's, Yeah. Okay, let's get yeah. through the rest of these right, comments. The New Ontario the for the win. Um, oh, New Ontario. It's about it. Um, let's go. Your strong logger. Gross is so good. And then asked again by Ewart. What is next? Next week's beer. And saying best Euro beer is Dab. Next I've had week. Dab. I don't mind it. It's again something I. Yeah, Dab's good. It's it just loggers and Pilsners are just not, not a style that really gets me going I mean, these days. I mean, so I don't more go for More recently. But I mean, for the longest time, I wasn't really a huge fan of lagers. Just because really they, they were boring. Gross actually comes in normal bottles. bottles. If you want to be boring, you can buy normal weird. bottles. Yeah. Like, saying, swing, how are swing top bottles annoying? What? What? Here, no. here, like we don't get it in normal bottles like that, with like green bottles or anything. We just get it in the swing tops and the cans. We can, mm. we get it. All three versions can be found between like the beer store and the LCBO and stuff here in, Nor in Ontario. Mm. I'm all about those. How, how is that annoying? And then a bit randomly, I'm not sure what, where this came from, but uh, Teku Murray, a little bit of a, uh, I love you, hardcore Nick, and you're my favorite person in the world. And then Ashley saying you can find the swing top in Ontario, best, and the best uh, New, Brun New Brunswick. <laughs> there is, um, I, 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 I love you, long time, Nick. <laughs> and the best Arcadian beer is I love you even more, long time. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Teku Teku wants you bad right now, Nick. He loves yeah, you. Yeah, right. No, oh. best Brunswick beer is Moosehead. Like I'm, I'm as far like, as the lager goes. Eric Gilbert, Germans do swing top well among other things. 
that, that, that's that's leaving way too open yeah, that's cool. a place to say something terrible. Just You're done, your business. What about Chinese New Brunswick made lager? That's New no, Brunswick I was gonna, made lager. Hey, I wasn't going to go the porn route there, Greg. Oh, for fuck's sake. Mm -hmm. Let me okay, talk just here. regular Scheiser. Hi, Nick. Hi, Greg. Uh, none of your business. What do you think is the best New Brunswick made lager? I'm kind of interested in what you're thinking. What you're thinking is New Brunswick made lager. Teku asking yeah. what's a monk. Just like, today, he, a just like today, he was confused by the white stuff on the ground in my one video. You fucking oh, son. That place, like sir, body part. Recipe book that, you had, that somebody. Oh, posted. I slipped and fell on me monkton. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell, me monkton's all displaced now. I go down to the hospital. I don't know. Sprain my monkton last week. If I'm looking for a spirit drink, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be what I said. Usually. More times than not. You know yeah. what? You know what? I'll give you that. Yeah, again, for me, it's just kind of a bit boring. But Moosehead is one of well, those. Yeah, like, Moosehead is still the Moosehead. They are their own thing. They're not under the control of one of these kind of beer supervillain conglomerates that are ruling the world. So, yeah. Uh, none of your business. Just just copping out badly. <laughs> yeah, cop, right. cop out answer. It's all right. All right. Okay. Poor Nick. You don't drink a lot of beer. You just don't drink a lot of the same beer. And that's that's the kind of thing. Like if you're drinking like one of those big names, you want to recommend. You kind of drink. You don't drink a lot of the same thing all at once. And I don't either, really. But if I'm looking for a six pack of lager or something, it's usually you know, like a few things I'll gravitate to. And I like I like Moosehead is a good one. Uh, apparently, viewer uh, anyway. is not the biggest asshole ever, or anything like that. Yeah, just like fucking hey, carry off the screen. All right, so we'll actually. Sorry, share you are. Right. I'm Sword sorry for my offensive are. face, you dickhead. So the New England version of RoboHop comes wow. in at nine point two for style. Jesus, eight point one overall. We actually really liked it. I like that picture you found too. That's cool. Yeah, I just found it on YouTube. That's a, that's a high score, man. I think you're missing my marks, man. Yeah, like I actually that's actually considering. I remember that uh like Greg and Redbeard gave it ten and nine five each. It kind of brought everything up. And then Ashley and, and Red and then Lee brought everything down and I was in the middle, so it's it worked out to nine two and eight one. So basically the beer's like an eight. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Like I said, if it was available as one of their core beers, I would grab at least one can every single time I go to the LCBO. That would be like one of my go-to things. Like it, it's it really great. Is, it really is one of those beers where Chad, the albino rhino, some of you may have heard of him. He used to say it's one of those beers where you drink six of them, you don't know how alcoholic it is, and then you pass out and shit your pants. <laughs> That could happen, and I'm you know, sure. you, you know what? The kind of the, the, the way the way the way it I've done this, going. the way I've done this before with alcohol and stuff. With years and years ago, a buddy of mine, his dad, went to Russia and brought back some actual like cans of this called Black Death vodka, oh, and, like Jesus. a pop a pop size can. Here with the story, and me and him both sat down on his couch in his room, down in his basement, and drank a can, and it was like drinking a can of water. There was no burn, no you have no idea. Drink a can of this. Like, oh, I have to go to for pee. And I stood up, and all of a sudden, it's like, wow, I'm hammered. And just fucking <laughs> face plant. Like, yeah, it was like, holy, holy shit. What is this? Fuck GLB, no ship, no care. Really? Always oh, talking about like how he can't get GLB beers in Windsor. Oh, oh you well, can always be nicer to Greg, and he'll send you some. Oh, you win. But this is Greg versus you, or it's like cats versus dogs. You know, how, how how dare a brewery do their own thing and make themselves happy and yeah, you know, yeah. keep keep all the make sure they have enough stock to supply their demand and stuff and so, not not run out of shit all the time and end up making a bunch of people. Oh, it, oh. Too bad GLB isn't more like Barn Cat. Oh, oh. G GLB is a fucking amazing brewery. They make amazing beer and like again, they're they're all about supporting. <clears throat> their local like Etobicoke, like there's a kind of about... red beard while it keeps talking. I, I was done. That was absolutely. Yeah, you know the, the only thing I'll say, and I'm, I'm not really. I mean, we all know that Ewart's a troll. He he's a dick, but we love him anyway. Um, no, but the thing is, the, the Ewart does bring up a point, and I sort of agree with him. Is that Ewart's always saying Barn Cat's the greatest brewery in the world? Blah 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 blah. Maybe they're great. Maybe they're shit. I don't know. 
because they don't make their shit available to me, so I don't care. Yeah, and, like Bart well, Cat's like the GLB movie. of Windsor. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, I can understand that. Like, if you can't get it, then you don't care about it. And I mean, I understand that. Like, you know. All right. So the most interesting thing that Greg, that sorry, uh, you were actually brought up tonight is what's next week's beer, which I will now present. Uh, oh. There's red beard up front. All right. So yeah, next week's beer, since the question has been asked by two people that have counted so far, Lady Lee and Yurt, we are going to go with another lager, Asahi. Asahi. We are going to do Asahi. Yay. Oh, I got a super dry beer. And already bringing out the stereotypical accents. Yeah, I know, I know. It's nice. not cool anymore. It's just Asahi lager, a really dry price lager mm. from Japan. See how it can face up to Sapporo. <laughs> oh. Should make it a, a Sapporo versus Asahi review. It should be um, like maybe we should start doing head to heads or something like that. It'd be kind of cool. Not bad. We've talked about beers. that many times, and you've Let's always talked about it on the after chat. We talk about it on the after chat, chat, which we can go to right now. So, Lady um, is also, and uh, Tekumuri says, "Ask who's Chris the Peters killed those women." Lady has got hers for next week. Tekumuri says, "Mark up, of course, yeah." Eric Gilbert says, I'd rather be downtown Detroit than Windsor. Oh. Whoa. Drop it. My barn cat. Does Denver. Detroit even still have a downtown? Oh, don't. Oh, my no. God. It's, it's... Uh, no, no, something, something, something penis right here. Right. Anyway, so yeah, <laughs> you, you want to order some barn cat stuff? I wouldn't mind ordering some barn cat, but I don't. Uh, I'd rather be in Detroit too, for the record. Yeah, well, you can't go across because of COVID. All right. So I think that's where we're going to cut things off. Uh, let's bring me front and center here and say thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, I'm going to continue drinking the Bring Out Your Dead that I was drinking on Red Beard's channel. Yeah, me too. My Robohot's all gone. And I imagine that just like Red Beard's story about the vodka, as soon as I stand up here, I'm going to fall over. Uh, that's so fine, thank man. You everybody. Carefully. Right. I want to thank everybody for watching and tune in next week for Asahi. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God.